In this lesson, we'll talk about dimensional analysis and what a unit fraction is. But before we get into those topics, here we have a list of some basic conversions. On the left, we have the conversions in measurement. And on the right, we have conversions in time. And now we'll talk about a unit fraction. And a unit fraction is basically a special form of one. And just remember that any time you multiply something by one, you don't change the value, but you can change the way that your quantity is expressed. You can also change your units of measurement. So here's an example of a unit fraction. So we can see from our conversions that one foot is equal to 12 inches. So if we were to put one foot divided by 12 inches, notice that they both are the same. And that's actually equal to a special form of one. Notice also for the conversions in time, one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So let's say if we were to put 60 seconds over one minute, that's also a special form of one. So now we'll use these unit fractions along with dimensional analysis to answer some questions. So let's take a look at this example. It says make the following conversion in the US system by multiplying by the appropriate conversion factor. And here we're asked to write the answer as a whole number or a mixed number. So in this case, we're asked to convert two feet to inches, right? So we're asked to convert two feet to inches. So now I'm, I'm going to multiply that by a unit fraction, which is a special form of one. Since I'm changing feet to inches, I want my feet unit to cancel. So I'm going to put feet in the denominator, and I'm going to put inches in the numerator. And now I'm going to simply use a conversion. We know that one foot is equal to 12 inches. So notice now when we multiply, right, the unit of feet will cancel. We have 2 times 12 inches, which gives us a total of 24 inches. So therefore, 2 feet is equal to 24 inches. We'll take a look at another example. Here we're asked to convert 5 feet to inches. So we have 5 feet. And we're going to multiply that by a unit fraction. So since we want the measurement of feet to cancel, we'll put feet in the denominator. And we're going to put inches in the numerator. And now we'll simply write out the conversion. We know that 1 foot is equal to 12 inches. And now when we multiply, the unit of feet will cancel. So we have 5 times 12 inches, which is 60 inches. Therefore, 5 feet is equal to 60 inches. We have another example, a horse racing example. And in this example, we're given that one furlong is equal to 220 yards. How many feet are in 16 furlongs? So here we're asked to convert 16 furlongs to feet. So we have 16 furlongs Now to give us a conversion in the actual problem, we're given that one furlong is equal to 220 yards. So I'm going to put furlongs in the denominator. I'm going to put yards in the numerator. But notice we want to convert furlongs to feet. So we're going to have to make another conversion. So we want to convert yard to feet. So I'm going to put yard in the denominator and feet in the numerator. Okay. So once we multiply, notice that the furlongs are cancel then our yards will cancel and we're left with ultimately feet. 
So now we're going to write out the conversions. We're given that one furlong is 220 yards. And I also know that one yard is three feet. Right. So now when we multiply, notice that the unit of furlongs are canceled, the unit of yards will cancel, and we're left with feet. So we'll simply multiply 16 times 220 times three feet, and we have a total of 10,560 feet. And we will look at one last example. And in this example, we're asked to convert a speed limit. It says the maximum speed limit on part of a highway in California is 75 miles per hour. And we're asked to convert 75 miles per hour to feet per second. Okay, so here again, we're going to perform a couple of conversions in this problem. Okay, so we have 75 miles per hour. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to convert feet to miles or miles to feet. So I'm going to put mile in the denominator. I'm going to put foot in the numerator. Okay. So we can convert miles to feet. Next we're going to convert hours to seconds. So since we have the unit of hour, which is in the denominator, I'm going to put the hour in the numerator on our unit fraction. Therefore, when we multiply, the unit of hour will cancel. And I'm going to put second in the denominator. So now we'll simply write out our conversion. We know that one mile is 5,280 feet. We know that one hour is 3,600 seconds. So now when we multiply, notice that the unit of mile will cancel. Notice that the unit of hour will cancel, and we're left with feet per second. So we're going to multiply 75 times 5,280, we're going to divide that by 3,600, so we have a total of 110 feet per second. Okay. Now lastly, we're going to take a look at metric conversions, and for metric conversions, Okay, we're going to use this chart, and you may have heard of this. King Henry died unusually by drinking chocolate milk. So notice that the capital letters K H D U, which is just our base unit. Okay, when we're dealing with the metric conversions, we're either measure, we're either dealing with the unit of length, which is which is meter, a unit of liquid volume, which is liter or mass or weight, which is gram. So that's actually our base unit. Then we have DCM. So if we look at the leftmost, K is short for kilogram or kilo, right, which is our prefix. H is for hecto. D is for deca, right? U is our base unit. Then we have D for deci, C for centi, and me for milli. And we're simply going to use this, and we're going to move the decimal point accordingly. So in this example, we're asked to convert 46 centimeters to millimeters. So if I look in my chart, we have 46 centimeters, right, which is here under centimeters. And if we want to convert to millimeters, I'm simply going to move one place to the right. So in 46, our decimal is behind the 6. So I'm going to move one place to the right. So we have that 46 centimeters is equal to 460 millimeters. 
So however many places in whichever direction you move in the chart, you're going to move that same direction and that same number of places in your decimal.